Welcome to the presentation of the Wearables Community Workshop, Wearing Design Principles. This workshop is part of the Ignite Innovation Showcase at Iowa State University, and we are glad you are here. My name is Nathan D. Edwards. I am an Associate Teaching Professor from the Art and Visual Culture Department in the College of Design at Iowa State University. I am also the co-director of the Wearables Design Show. This workshop is related to the Wearables Workshop Wearing Design Principles, developed by my colleague, Architecture Associate Teaching Professor, Director of Design Studies 102, and my fellow co-director of the Wearables Design Show, Patience Luth. In this workshop, I will take you through design strategies to help you develop ideas, explore construction methods, and enrich your creative experience with the outcome to produce a modular wearable design. By the end of this workshop, you will learn what modularity is and the potential of modular design, learn about how design principles can be used to create and impact your designs, challenge conventional uses of materials and push the boundary of materiality and fabrication, learn about and know design terminology discussed in this workshop, and realize one's own design process and to have fun while engaging in this creative experience. The main design terminology discussed in this workshop includes principles of design, 3D or three-dimensional design, module or modularity, kinetic or movement, concept and ideation, iteration, prototype, analog or made by hand, materiality and fabrication. The principles of design include unity, variety, economy, hierarchy, emphasis, balance, proximity, proportion, rhythm, and contrast. Please note the list of principles I have here is my own. If you research the principles of design, you will see that the list will differ from each artist and designer. Before we dive into the workshop, let's have a quick overview of what I'll be doing. First, I will be reviewing my materials that I have collected to use in this workshop. This will be a different collection of materials for everyone, but the concepts presented in this presentation can be applied to anything that you are using. Through my examination of my materials, I will begin to develop early ideas of what is possible with imagining the wearable design. Next, I will talk about and show you how ideation is a method of evolving early ideas into concrete concepts that will help you move into the construction of your 3D modular designs. A brief segment discusses the importance and goals of prototype exploration, but more emphasis in the material play and fabrication methods are explored in the construction of the modular wearable. Finally, I will wrap up the workshop with a concluding statement and documenting the wearable. Thank you for being here and enjoy the workshop. When you're thinking about a wearable, you need to think about durability. If it's delicate, it may tear easily when worn. And so how can you identify within your work especially your materials, and as you are beginning to think about the concept, how can you consider the strength of what you are working with? As I examined my materials, I was able to get a better understanding of what their personality is like, what their potential is, what their limits are. The cloth that I'm using, this rag, um, it can easily be torn. Of course, if I fold it in on itself, it becomes a little more resistant to tearing and takes a lot more effort. With the, with the shish kebab skewers, um, they also have a type of resistance, which makes them durable. I am using a mixed media process, mixed media being two or more different materials coming together. Having a limited amount of materials to work with can help you stay focused. I'm already working with a limited amount of materials for my prototype with the rags and the kebab skewers as well as Mod Podge. What this does for me is it helps me to focus on the potential of the material behavior and also the fabrication, how I am going to work with these, these materials, 
how they're going to be constructed together within my mod module design, and then also thinking with this idea of modularity that taking that eventual prototype and repeating it over and over again. And in my sketches here, you're able to see that I am thinking about that type of pattern making, that idea of mod taking that modular design and repeating it. And this is evidence of how I might begin to connect it together. Because within your modular design, you need to think about how that design is going to connect to other components to create the, the whole. So you're thinking about the parts to the whole. Now, you could see in the last portion of my ideation development, I was really bringing in my materials and comparing them to my, to my sketches. And this is really a sign that I'm ready to move into prototype design. Now, with my evidence here of my ideation, we can just re-examine the work that I've done. I identified within the material, within the rag here, kind of a square or rectangular shape, all right? Then also with the shish kebab skewers, have a predictable shape and thinking about repetition, I think that makes sense. And so as I began to draw and to, to paint in this kind of mixed media approach to ideation, it allowed me to kind of explore what shapes, lines I already am working with. Line is part of the elements of design. So line, shape, value, color, texture, and so on. Understanding what I'm looking at by thinking about line, thinking about shape, I can translate that into drawing. And so that provided me a path moving forward. Now, in this particular drawing, I'm thinking about the shape. And so I've got one square here, another square here, another square here, one more square here. And also you saw that I had used a series of lines to begin structuring the composition. Really, as you're exploring ideation, don't be hesitant. We want to. Uh, we want to be careful. We think that we want to make something perfect, but that's really not the point. The point is to work out your ideas. Sketching and this type of uh, hybrid making um, really is about pulling out your thoughts, your ideas, your visions, what you see within your mind's eye, using sketching, using this method of ideation to help try to make sense of what it is that you're doing because ultimately you are going to transition from two-dimensional design into something that's going to become three-dimensional. Some of my earlier ideations focusing on this concept helped me to think about where I would like to place my wearable based on the design and how I imagine it would work with that area of the body. One thing that you want to be prepared for as you consider the module that you are designing is how is it going to interact with the body? You're designing a wearable. Where is it going to be worn on the body? For me, I'm thinking about the shoulder and neck area, that the wearable is going to rest on the shoulders and kind of drop and kind of suspend below in the front and in the back. Um, that's what I want. We'll see if that's gonna work out. Take a few photographs of yourself in various body postures, imagining that you are wearing your modular wearable. If you need help with this, ask a family member or friend to take a few snapshots of you. When taking the photographs, consider the background. You'll want to take photos against a plain background to minimize visual noise. Wear clothing that contrasts with your chosen background. The benefit of printing out photos of yourself is that you don't have to draw a human figure over and over again, allowing you to draw on many photocopies in a short amount of time. 
This captures the spirit of rapid iteration, allowing you to work out your ideas quickly without worrying about the preciousness of the drawing. When I think about my principles of design that I have selected, uh, which is repetition, and I would also say pattern, but when I think about the, the principles of design, I generally like to contain movement, pattern, and repetition within rhythm, because I think rhythm covers all of those areas. Everything that I'm exploring right now possesses that, which is great. When I think about a second principle to follow, is it okay? Is it enough just to say pattern and repetition? Sure, you can really do whatever you want. I think ultimately when you do examine the, the list of the elements and principles of design, you can in some way identify everything on that list within your design in some way. However, some are more dominant than others, and right now I know for sure rhythm is one of those. But what's the other one? I think the other ones right now in my phase of development are a little weaker in identity, and that's okay, it's not stopping me from moving forward. So if you yourself are having trouble selecting a second principle, don't worry about it. Keep moving forward, and maybe one will speak to you as you move forward. Prototype is the act of translating the ideation phase into realized 3D investigations that will result in a final modular product that will be used to help in the production of the modular wearable. As you move into generating prototypes, you've learned that sketching in the ideation phase is a means to imagine and explore ideas in greater depth. In the prototype phase, you'll explore your ideas through material development and fabrication, transforming your designs from 2D to 3D. In this workshop, I recommend that you evolve your prototype design through at least three phases of development. Part of the fun for creative thinkers and makers is the challenge and rigor of problem solving and learning from mistakes. As you evolve your fabricated module form, continue to reimagine, rework, and resolve issues that arise as a result of 3D investigation. Enjoy the process and don't give up. Your early prototypes won't be perfect, but as you evolve them, focus on the awareness of materiality and your fabrication methods. Materiality is the awareness and understanding of material potential and limits, including its unique personality and behavior. This should tell you what it can and cannot do, as well as how the material works with other paired materials to bring your prototype designs to life. Fabrication is similar to materiality as it is the exploration and inventive use of methods of construction and craft of the materials in your design. This includes, but not limited to, durability, aesthetic quality, and function. As you explore your prototypes, continue to question the following. How is it a module? How will your design become a modular wearable? How do your two selected principles impact your design choices? And when you imagine your design being worn, how can the body be used to animate and bring to life the modular wearable? By asking and considering questions such as these, you are participating in evaluating your designs. Let's move ahead into the construction of the wearable.
So I'm making pretty good progress on the production of my modular pieces. So far I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which means I have five more left to do before I connect them. And I just want to take you along with the process and kind of explain what I'm doing and what I'm aware of and things that you might look out for if you are doing something similar to me, um, which is trying not to make too big of a mess. So you can see I'm using a paint tray and it's a good thing to use um, because it captures, you can see I'm using quite a bit of water. Um, it captures it all at the base um, and it's easy to use. Uh, my pre-cut pieces allow me to work quickly and I have a method down. Usually when you're making several pieces that are all the same, the first few may be a little awkward because you're trying to figure out how to mass produce them by hand. And you can see I'm working with, a, this is actually a little spritzer bottle. And however, it will just take forever just to do this. So it's more effective just to pour a little bit on at a time. And then when you run out, which I'm just about to, I have this little watering can. I'm gonna bring it over. I could use this if I wanted to, but this little bottle is a lot easier to handle. So I pour a little bit of water on and then I carefully bring a little bit of Mod Podge over at a time. And I'm not using a lot of Mod Podge. I'm trying to sp spread it out as much as possible. And I'm not worried about imperfections. In fact, I'm embracing that within the production of my pieces. So this idea of fabrication constructing material, but also being aware of its personality and how to use that um, as a strength. Now, I also have to flip this around because the skewers don't fit this way, of course. And I also have to be very much aware of where the bottle is at because I do not want to spill my Mod Podge all over the place. And you'll see me use occasionally the brush or my squeegee and what I'm doing is just trying to tuck the white rag material underneath the skewer to get a better fit. And everything that I'm using has its place. I put the brush in a specific location, I put the squeegee in a specific location, and I move the Mod Podge bottle around based on what it is that I'm doing. So right now, it's located next to my tray. I know I'm not going to spill it based on where it's at at the moment. And when I set my brush down, I try to always put it back in the same place. I'm just about to finish tucking in the second skewer and I could use the squeegee honestly I just use whatever I grab first I guess the squeegee has been good to use to drain out any extra water because you don't want it to be too terribly damp because the thing is the stuff has to dry before you can attach the next component to the piece the component being the part that um, connects all of the modular pieces together. Now, I've been leaving a little bit of the skewer out the top, about, about a half an inch. Some of them are a little more about an inch long. 
um, and to make sure that you get a good fit with the skewers with the rag, what I like to do is kind of roll them in like a scroll just a little bit, just to make sure that that tuck is effective. And now I'm just about to bring it over to my tray over here. I'm gonna move the Mod Podge bottle over so that it's not in the way of my hands. Now, you can see that I have been placing chunks of clay on this board. First off, this board, this plastic tray, catches any excess water and it'll just stay in the tray. So be aware of any liquids that you're working with. Where is it gonna go if there's excess material? In the bottom of the paint tray or in the bottom of this tray? I'm using clay blocks because the skewers, of course, can just be pierced right through the clay and they stand up on their own. This is a great way to dry material that's designed in this way. Then also the clay is also the clay is great to stick to the plastic. It stays in place and it has some weight to it where these are a little heavy, but the clay chunks anchor them to the board so they're able to stand up. If you have too many skewers attached to one piece of clay, um, you risk having the work fall over. But for right now, I mean, it's working just fine. So I'm gonna find a nice open spot and just gently pierce that through to allow it to stand on its own. And I'm gonna keep going. So I've got a few more left to do. So these have been drying for just a little while and they're not fully dry yet, but they're dry enough to continue working with them. So what I'm going to do next is attach them to one another by following a similar method, except this time around it gets a little more complex because as you build with them, the wearable starts to form because really what we're looking at is the wearable. Yes, it's in different pieces right now, but this idea of modularity, this idea of a module being connected to a series of other modules is going to build up from the part to the whole. And as I connect these together one by one, I'm going to need to make sure that the system I have is gonna work. So you can see the current phase of the material. You can see how the Mod Podge actually makes for a pretty durable material, totally transforming the personality, the behavior of the cloth. So we've gone from something like this to something like this. And you can see within this particular piece, based on how it was positioned with the clay foundation, uh, it formed into a unique position. So that's something to be aware of and something also to embrace as part of the um, materiality of the thing. So I think we're off to a good start here. So, all right, enough playing around. Let's, let's wrap this up. So what I'm doing right now is planning out my space because right now I'm running out of table space and I need to shuffle some things around. So learning from what you're doing, what did I do before and what can I do better this time around? I know what the end goal is gonna look like as far as how I need to organize this 
platform here, I had to, of course, transition from the smaller plastic tray to this board here. I put a piece of plastic down, and then, of course, now I can arrange my clay pieces to prop up my revised forms as I connect them together. And of course that connection is going to happen right here. And so as I prop them up, I want to make sure I have the room to be able to do that. But then also I am redoing the, or repeating the same process using the paint tray with the Mod Podge water um, technique. And currently I can't do that because I have no room. So now I have to shuffle some more stuff around. I've let the wearable dry completely and now I'm ready to remove it from its setup here and I'm going to try wearing it just a little bit and then once I'm ready to go I'm going to document. I know that it's going around my shoulders so how that's going to happen is probably like a scarf sort of what it, well, before I put it on, the bottoms of the skewers are just a little sharp, so I probably should remove those so that they don't hurt me. All right, so this wearable is made up of a series of pieces. I think there's about 15 main pieces and then they're attached by an additional white rag. So kind of reflecting back on where I started first, thinking about what types of materials I'm working with, how durable they are, what is their property like, how might they be able to work with other materials. Understanding that, that's what's going to help me to move forward into the ideation phase, which you saw me work through a series of sketches and talked about how the developing ideas evolve into concrete um, visions of what's possible. This is just one version of many representations that I could pursue. Making this has allowed me to better understand the materials and the fabrication process and how I could better evolve the modular design. 
particularly thinking about how these individual pieces could detach from one another. Right now, they're all connected permanently, but in further iterations, I could design connection points to allow the control of the length of the wearable and also how many modular pieces can connect at one intersection. Now, one thing I'm thinking is I probably should have done an additional piece right here so that thinking about that point of connection, how can this connect to another piece so that I have one full circuit? I think for right now, I might just tape it together. Um, it's for the most part probably going to be camouflaged. I could also just overlap it, but I'm imagine, imagining that I'm going to have to wrap this around my shoulders um, at least twice. Maybe this is just the kinetic portion of the wearable. What I'm going to do next is focus on some documentation and maybe give you some ideas on how you might do the same. Let's go. All right, I'm back again one more time. After getting a chance to look in the mirror to see what this looks like, I think wearing it around my shoulders like this rather than up around my head is a better alternative. It stays put if, as long as my arms are um, out just a little bit to help support it. I think, I think this will do. Maybe it's also just a little bit safer so the skewers aren't going to poke my eye. <laughs> All right, now let's go. When you move into documenting your work, consider where you'll photograph and, if you record like I did, how can the space you document in impact the turnout of your photos and video? I filmed in a designated area in my basement, installing a temporary craft paper wall to help with my creative interpretation. Within this area, and based on how many cameras you'll use, I used three, define the path you'll walk from camera to camera. This is where you will establish the composition of the space, yourself, and the wearable within the framing of the camera. Finally, I set up the lights to create a space that enhances strong dramatic lighting and the play of cast shadows. Ultimately, you'll get to make all of the creative decisions when it comes to your documentation and the space you document in. I used iMovie to help in the editing of my documentation. It's user-friendly and makes for an enjoyable experience. Think outside the box, take creative risks, and have fun.